On this episode, we question ourselves. Am I just being a wimp? But our game remains unquestionably good. This game is already getting good. And finally, the secret ingredient is revealed. It feels so good when you explode and they fly out and... <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Hi everybody, this is Christian, this is Lazy Lives Academy. Welcome to episode 91. And that is going to be <laughs> the episode where we do a lot of gameplay stuff, hopefully. Uh, Lord Cow Schmuck. This is already such a good looking game, right? There's so, co so many cool things we're doing. We can change bullets into pickups, we can pick up the pickups. Cool stuff is happening time to do a gameplay kind of pass. Let me do like a to-do list here. We want to figure out the damage values for sure. Um, we want to make sure that, uh, that the pickups don't, don't leave the screen where we launch them into space. Um, we want to lock the player to the screen. Let's, let's prioritize this. <clears throat> we want to go at, over the enemies and we want to actually add some values to the enemies because we don't, we don't have a lot of gameplay stuff. <laughs> we have a lot of gameplay stuff in the enemies editor, but there's two more things that we need to add. One is um, we need to add points. <laughs> How many points the enemies are worth? We are not tracking that. Uh, but also I want to maybe save how many pickups an enemy will drop because different enemies might drop different types of pickups. If you shoot down a gigantic enemy, I want that enemy to be spawning a whole bunch of pickups. That's as a reward, right? So there's a collision box issue that I want to address. And I also, because, um, and then also maybe I want to also already add, add aura, aura damage. This makes a little bit no sense, but I think it feels good. Uh, we're going to talk about it in a second. Proximity kill rewards. So that's kind of like a huge gameplay aspect of, of, our, um, of our game that we designed, of my prototypes I figured out. Uh, I want to reward players from, for hitting enemies at close range. And yeah, we have to track that and we have to do the rewards and we have to also communicate that to the players. That's also very important. But anyway, let us start out. I want to lock the player to the screen. <laughs> it's kind of amazing how far we got into this game, into developing of this game. And we haven't done that at all. Uh, so uh, anyway, see here, so we're moving. Uh, yeah, so let me clamp down, clamp down the location of the player here at this point. Px equals mid three px 123 these are values i derive these are good values that um, uh, does make the ship seem as if it's on the screen still uh <laughs> it's kind of amazing that we haven't done that but here we are um we could so the question is like is it better to keep it in two separate equations or not so let's go let's try this five one four six um, so we're gonna do something like this. Is this good? Doing the clamping and the addition at the same time. This saves us two tokens. So let's let's do that. Okay. So now the we're adding to the to the position of the player's ship, and we're clamping down to the values at the same time. Let's let's try that. So you can see now we cannot leave the screen anymore. And I made it so that the canopy is kind of like, yeah, I mean, it's, I, I tried different values and made sure that, that it kind of like feels good, right? I, I want to be the ship to be like, if you go very far down and so that only the canopy look, uh, is visible, uh, it kind of looks weird. So uh, on the bottom, when the ship's on the bottom, I, I want to show a little bit of the body of the ship as well. And then on the left side, we're touching uh, the canopy. The outline of the canopy touches the, the edge of the screen. And on top, yeah, on top, we actually, we, we, I want to have leave some space out, so so you cannot actually like shoot into, off into into the distance, into into off screen. Okay, this feels good. So this means that we have clamped down on the player to the location of the screen. Let us discuss damage values. That is something I want to be discussing. discussing. So here we have gameplay, right? Uh, no, actually, wait. 
yeah, we have gameplay. Let's put it in here. So um, DMG, DMG bomb is how much damage the bomb does. I figured out, I figured out that 40 was okay. And right now I think I'm doing way more. And then DMG shot, I figured out 0 0.7 is good. Oh, I actually have it here as well, the shot DMG. So let me remove this. Actually, let's put it, let's put it up there. Let's put it up there, why not? Yeah, we have shot DMG, DMG bomb, and DMG shot. Okay, good. Or maybe should I should uh, let's let's okay let's make it consistent with what we already have, so, so we don't have to change things. So bomb DMG. Okay, so like this. And then here, when we're doing the bomb, when we're looping through a lot of the enemies, and then we just do bomb damage. Okay, now we might have situations where we're doing more damage when, for example, we're just a hyper mode. There's a hyper mode coming up probably in the next episode. But uh, yeah, we're just not gonna, we're gonna think about that when that problem comes up. Right, so damage values are checked off. Uh, off screen pickups check. Yeah, let's do that real quick. So when we do the picks, uh, I want the pickups to be hitting the edges of the screen. So we're gonna go like if p dot x, if that's smaller than, um, well, how big is a pickup? Because I might be like one, two, three. Let's go three. If it's smaller than three, then if that happens, then I want p dot sx to be equals minus p dot sx. Right? I just want to. Uh, make it bounce off the edges of the screen uh, and or p dot x uh, on the same thing on the opposite opposite side uh, actually we're going to use the same clamping values maybe that to be because we had to use three here so we can use 123 on the other side uh, there we go so this will make the should make the pickups bounce off the edges of the screen can we can we can we somehow simulate this we have to keep kill an enemy like on the very edge like here yeah, yeah, this worked. Yeah, you saw the the enemies, the cow popped out of the enemy, and it bounced off the edge of the screen. Oh, we got some, we got some, we got some of them stuck. Yeah, yeah because we're calculating them, because we're recalculating them here if they're magnetic. So setting them to negative doesn't really matter because we're recalcul recalculating them again. Oh, by the way, I checked also, uh, it's actually because hmm, the ship position is on screen space. So 3 and 123 makes sense, but the um, the pickups exist in world space. That's a little bit wider because of X scroll. So actually, um, I figure out the correct value is 132. Uh, and so now what I want to maybe do is when I bounce off the edge of the screen, I want to reset the position of the pickup to the edge of the screen so it doesn't get stuck um, because we are sometimes moving the pickups differently and if we move the pickups differently we don't want them to actually fly off to the edge of the screen we want to actually to at least stay at the edge of the screen right so we're going to go p dot uh, sx equals mid 3 dot p dot sx so we're gonna that's, that's where we're gonna clamp them down uh, no, not SX. Uh, this is going to be X, right? So it doesn't fly off. Let's try that. Yeah, yeah, they're bounced, but they don't get stuck. Oh, this looks so sick when they get sucked in. Now you saw something maybe that, that is a bit concerning and we're gonna address that in a second. Now that we, we reduced the bomb damage quite quite a, quite a bit, we reduced it to 40. And you know, there's always gonna be enemies that are just like so strong, like especially for like a boss enemy for example. They get hit by the bomb and they don't die. And so we might, you might have to soften the enemies before they die, right? 
And for that, we need to some kind of indicator when the enemy is about to about to die. But so that's something that we're going to deal with uh, about in a second. All right, so I think now we successfully clamped down the position of the pickups to the edges of the screen. Let us talk about enemy values. And for that, I think we need to go back to, um, to, the, to the enemy editor. Load and edit. All right, so, oof. Oh no, <laughs> there's a lot of values in here. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to in, uh, insert a new, a new, a, a new, two new values to the enemies. And there should be like after fx, but before b1x. Because b1x uh, and b2x, these are the positions where the enemy is firing out. And usually it's gonna be, you know, like something like here. But now I want to add more columns to this and you know we're getting a lot of information about those different enemies Oof. um i'm glad that we have different brains for the same type of enemy good um so how do we do this there we go so this is just the captions and we're just going to change the captions um that is going to be um so scr is score and then this one is going to be yeah, this was shadow size and shadow height. Yeah, yeah. And this is score, and this is cow. <laughs> How many cows they dropped? <laughs> um, yeah, so this is good. But now we just want to make sure that when we're drawing the preview, uh, that I think it's just like a preset. Right. When we're drawing the when we're doing the preset here, uh, we just want to make sure that um, this is, gets increased by two, right? So it, now it's like 14, 16. And this is 14, 15, 16, 17. This is the preview for, for where the enemy is firing out. Um, right, so this is zero. This is five, right? All right, let me, let me input all those values real quick. Okay, so these are the values filled in. So now um, we need to kind of like think about sc how scoring works. <laughs> a little afterthought, how does scoring work? And um, how does the uh, cow pickups dro uh, dropping work? So in my prototypes, I figured out that it's good if um, we have some kind of way to keep track of uh, like some extra cows that draw, if you shoot, manage to shoot down the enemy at all. There's gonna be to, uh, ability to get like more pickups and more uh, more cows when you shoot the enemies from close range. Um, that's always something that it is possible. And what, what kind of, doesn't matter what kind of enemy you're shooting down. But for certain enemies, you just get a lot of pickups, no matter how you shoot them down. And for most enemies, this, this number is going to be zero. But for some enemies, for example, this big enemy that we have here, this big chunker, I want to reward people for shooting down that enemy like this. So I'm going to give it three. I think I had it three previously. I think it is three. Now for the scoring, for how much score I get from shooting on enemy, I think a good ba base value is 100. That's kind of like so how much score I will get for like a random uh, popcorn type enemy. But for bigger enemies, for example, like this enemy here, that is gonna be uh, at a thousand. Now you don't really see this, this kind of breaks our <laughs> Or display a little bit maybe some of these should be like triple digits but it's okay um and then this is going to be this is kind of like a harder enemy it has this has more hp so i want to give players a little bit more score for this enemy so i'm going to give it 200 and then later on when we have the final enemies we can you know we can figure out those numbers for real these but for now I'm, I'm good with these numbers here uh i will export this this should have written these values into our text file but we now may want to make sure that when we run the game it doesn't break yeah let's go to spawn and this is now in Kaushmap. Uh, because you see we have this stuff here right that's this these values have changed now um so it's like uh plus two right so oh yeah it's plus two okay so it's 14 6 16 uh 
15 and 17, right? So these values are going to be saved differently uh, at a different place in the, um, the database. Uh, before I forget, I will just do it immediately also in the uh, brain edit. Yeah, immediately here the same, same fix. 14, 15, 16, 17. Okay, good to save. I haven't even checked if it works. Let me see. I can tell that uh, I'm actually... It's actually difficult to shoot the enemies down now. Did I, did I tweak the damage? The HP? I think I tweaked the HP value of those enemies. Oh no. No, I did not change the HP values. That's interesting. Let's try this again? Did, did, am I just like being... Am I just being a wimp? Oh man. Because we should be doing 40 damage. Uh, when I do a bomb on the on big chunkers and they sh they are have 60 health points I just seem not to be able to keep kill them oh they, now they got killed okay there's something funky happening with the damage ah I know what the problem is I see <laughs> Okay, so the problem is like if has hit, if that's true, then it doesn't actually evaluate this next function. So we actually have to do like not has hit enemy or uh oh, here I gonna again. Okay, so I move things around a little bit. Maybe that will fix the problem. Hopefully, let's let's try that. Oh, a little bit of a... I don't like these kind of like rotating, uh, orbiting pickups. We have to pay attention to this a little. Yes. Okay. That, that felt good. Okay, yeah, I can shoot it now. Okay. Oh, that feels so satisfying. <laughs> Okay, so uh, now that enemies are spawning correctly, uh, spawn N, um, and we have now those additional information about enemies, we need to save this information in here. <laughs> I tell you, score equals, um, so that was I think 12, cows equals 13. Right, and then when we hit enemy, um, then I want to add not 500, but uh, e dot score. And then I also don't want to spawn uh, spawn pick. There we go. So we're gonna go local cows equals. E cows if cows is greater than zero then and then cows I'm, I'm putting it into a into a dedicated variable because I already know that this will change later on <laughs> um, but yeah let's, let's try it so now we're not gonna actually get the cows when we hit the enemies uh, also, by the way, I also want to score. I want to actually start with a zero score. Uh, there we go. What? Oh, there we go. Okay. <clears throat> so you can see I'll be getting 200 for those enemies. Uh, 100 for each of those enemies. We're not getting anything for picking up power uh, pickups. That's something that we might fix later on, but for now that's okay. Uh, we're not getting anything for those pickups. We're just picking them up. <laughs> but again, that's not a high priority right now. And then we should get thousand for this one. Yeah, we got thousand for this one. That's good. And you can see we got cows for for killing them. Three cows are popping out of this one because for any kill of those guys we get three cows. That's fan freaking tastic. Okay, so this fixes that problem. 
let us check of this thing from our list. Enemies have now values, points, and pickups. Fantastic. Next up, I want to fix the collision box. Uh, let me show you what I mean. You see, when you go to sprite dit and you go to sprite number 28, the ship hitbox is exactly correct. But there is an issue. There is an issue why we're still not getting correct collisions. And that is that the bullet hitbox is wrong. So we're gonna have to create a bullet hitbox. Um, bull hit. And then we are this is going to be a hitbox of a bullet. What is a, what is a, a normal bullet? Uh, this one, 40, okay? So we're going to set it as hitbox 40. And then the width is going to be 3. The height is going to be 3. And this is going to be minus 1. And this is going to be minus 1. Oops, nope. And this is not going to be minus 1. It's going to be 1 and 1. I changed my mind. I'm going to call this a bull call. And then also I'm going to write down that number because, man, um, 62 bull call. And then uh, I, while I'm already here, we have to make sure that this is going to get assigned to all of our bullets. Our bullets have way too big uh, hitboxes. That's why they hit our ship, even though they're not supposed to hit our ships. So we're going to export this. Uh, but I'm also going to, I'm going to copy this one out and I'm going to call this Aura. Um, I'm going to explain in a second what that means. Let me copy over those values that I figured out. This was <laughs> this took a while to figure out those values uh, because it's kind of like a vibes kind of thing. It's and I'm not used to this kind of stuff. I'm not playing shmups that often or that intensely that I notice like that my gut feeling. I can rely on my gut feeling to figure this out. Uh, so I really relied on on feedback from more experienced shmup players than me to kind of like arrived at kind of like this kind of hitbox. So aura damage, we're going to talk about this in a second, but aura damage basically is, means that when you shoot out a bullet and there is an enemy in this hit within this hitbox, that enemy gets hit in addition to any other actual shots that hit him. Uh, in, in the front, you do more, like if you're just like right in front of the, the enemy, you basically do like an additional bullet of hit. Um, but if an enemy is kind of like on the side, and you wouldn't hit them usually with the with the uh, with the, the shots. They just like get more damage from that way. Um, and yeah, I figured out this was a good hitbox for that. Uh, let's export, and I'm gonna write down 63 is our right. Let's go back to couch. Uh, no, let's not get back to couch map. We are going to go to load uh, pad edits. Oh man, we haven't loaded it in a while. And see, the collision here is all wrong. It's all wrong. And that's why we need to reset this now to 62. And all of our bullets will gonna have the same collision for now. Maybe later on we're gonna have different bullets that have different collision. Uh, if we, all of bullets will keep using the same collision, we might actually remove this ability for, uh, to define this. But uh, for now, it's fine. Load cow shmup. Uh, let's, let's, let's get hit by a bullet or something. Oh, okay, we definitely got hit by that bullet, but I want to go close to the bullets. Yeah, I yeah, see. Now, now the bullets are not hitting us. We can weave better between the bullets. That's fantastic. Oh, so sick. All right, so that we fixed the collision bo box, but now we want to also do the aura damage. The aura aura damage. Uh, and that's going to be a little bit of a hack. I'm not going to lie. This is going to be a little bit of a hack. We have to go to the part where we're doing collisions. There we go. This is this is collisions, right? This is shots with enemies. We're looping through all of the enemies and then we're doing the collision with the shots, right? And I'm gonna do something that is a little bit weird, but I think it makes sense. I think I'm just gonna do it, whatever. The problem is that when we're doing collision, we have to do collision between objects, right? So either we're gonna create like a dedicated aura object that we're gonna do collisions with, or we're just gonna re reuse the PSPR object for that because the aura would have to move with the player ship and that's ugh. so what i'm thinking is PSPR dot call equals um my spr square bracket uh, 63 uh, and then we do the collision check with the with that enemy right so we're gonna do yeah like this right PSPR and e we could be colliding these together right uh, if PSPR.E then end, 
and then and then oops and then we're just gonna reset the the aura to the 28 that it usually was <laughs> it's it's a little bit goofy i'm sorry um but i think and the question is like do we want to observe that zone for this one i guess we also want to observe that zone for this one so this is a little bit of a hack and i don't love it it's kind of like this weird exception right but what what can you do uh, i'm gonna mark this as super hack or uh, 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 uh yeah because maybe there's a way of doing this a little bit easier but yeah so we just like temporarily replace the collision box of our ship we do the collision between the ship and the enemy and if there is a collision then we do the hit and so forth uh let's see how that works oh by the way uh yeah Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, this is oh. Huh. So we we are not observing sh uh, that zone, or how are we going to do this? Um, let's go E. The problem is now <laughs> we're doing this, this collision every frame now, <laughs> but we also uh, only want to do this uh, when the shot actually came out on the frames where the shot actually came out. Um, so we're gonna go shot frame equals true when we're shooting, shot frame equals false when we're not shooting. We could also use shot weight maybe, hmm? Ah, whatever. So this is only something we're gonna do when, when we're actually shooting, when it's a shot frame that, that ha actually had the, sh the, the shot coming out of it. Again, hack without, without, Okay, so now, if I go close to an enemy... Okay. So now the enemies no, don't get hit, but now if I go close to the enemy and, and I'm shooting, then the enemy gets shot... Uh -uh. <laughs> I got shot a lot. <laughs> you see? I'm kind of like, it feels like, in like my... It kind of feels like if my... If there's a collision between my options and the enemies, kind of. And we might actually... That's, that would be a different way of solving this, maybe just making good options hit the enemies um, but actually that probably be more more tokens so let's just do it like this just like a little tweak a rooney that I, a lot of people were then missing because if you're like a pro gamer right uh, what you might do is just hang out next to an enemy and seal that enemy right um, oh by the way we might also want to increase this the ceiling but like hang out next to any enemy and seal them and uh, all the while shooting at some other enemies, kind of like, or you get very close to the enemy and do extra damage. It's not too much extra damage; it's just like one shot in addition to the shots that are already coming out. But it does help a little bit, right? <laughs> this game is already getting good, right? So we have <clears throat> aura damage. Now let us discuss. Let us discuss proximity kills and proximity kill rewards um so there's a game called uh devil blade is it devil blade i think it's devil blade yeah devil blade reboot and that came out and that had a nice system and i kind of copied the system from devil blade where the closer you get to enemy the more points you get you get like a multiplier so shooting an enemy from afar you just get the base value for shooting down the enemy but if you get a little bit closer you get twice as many points that's like a huge difference when you're scoring out right so you want to be get close to the enemies and even it has like multiple tiers like it's 2x at certain distance and if you get even closer it's 3x and even closer is 4x right it's like these kinds of tiers of um of rewards and I want to do that so uh, we're gonna do this in gameplay again this I told you this function or that we took put on the very top this hit enemy function this will now get expanded a lot uh, so if the hit, in, <clears throat> if the hit is gets down to zero then we want to um, want to calculate the distance between the enemy and the player so d equals hmm, did I switch to no I did not this um, PSP uh, or e dot x e dot y comma PSP r dot x PSP r dot y right so we we find out what the distance is 
<clears throat> and then depending on the distance, we're going to get a different multiplier. So uh, let's go low. Okay, let's go like this. So we're going to go if d, and then I wrote down the values. This took a while to figure out the correct values. Then, so this is 4x. Else if d is smaller than, no, wait, 20, 29 is 4x. That's very close. And then 43, that's 3x. And that is 58. That is 2x, right? Something like this. And then here cows, we're gonna set it to zero. And local, um, Malt, let's call it malt. Let's call it malt. Uh, that is going to be one. Usually it's one. But if it's 4x, we're going to set malt to four. Four. Oh no, that's two, three, right? So this gives us more points. Well, it doesn't give us yet more points, but it will eventually give us more points the closer we are to the enemy. I also want to reward players for getting closer to the enemy. So at, at starting at three, I want players to get more cows. So I'm gonna set cows to one. So just, just get a cow, even if the enemy usually wouldn't spawn a cow. You just get a cow. Uh, otherwise, you don't get any. Um, by the way, I'm gonna start doing this a little bit, especially when it's like this, because it kind of makes sense, right? Uh, and then, of course, we want to make sure that if the enemy would be spawning cows anyway, that we, you know, so we're gonna go cows equals uh, max cows and e, and e cows, right? So if we shoot down and uh, the enemy that spawns three cows from close proximity, we don't get a bonus cow for that, right? We could also do an add here, so it, you get four cows. Uh, let's, let's keep it like this for now. And now I also want to multiply the score by the malt. Like this. And that is basically it. That is all, all we need. Oh, there's a problem, there's a problem. Ah, there's a then missing here. Right, so let's see. So here we should get 100. So these were our 100. Now I'm gonna get close to it anyway. See, now we got 400 for that kill. And also I got a cow from because I shot, shot the count from close range. This is fantastic. There's a problem that we're getting all these bonuses also from, from a bomb kill. That's not cool. So we need to maybe, when we hit an enemy, we want to maybe specify that this was a bomb kill. Let's do it like this, bomb. And then we're gonna go if not bomb then because I don't want the bombs necessarily to be doing this kinds of proximity kind of stuff uh, because bombs are quite often going to be close enough anyway uh, and then and then we're going to set true does that even work uh, because we're doing a not and sometimes it's going to be a nil not nil does that even work it seems to work Right, so if we do a kill here, then nothing happens. <sighs> it feels so good when you explode and they fly out and... <laughs> <laughs> That's the good stuff. But you might be seeing what the problem is, what the big problem is. The big problem that we're having here right now is that you get all those points, right? But you have to like pay attention to the score. This is kind of like, oh, that's kind of like iffy. We want to maybe uh, communicate visually that you're getting the multipliers. And for that, we would need to create like the new pop-ups and so forth. But you know what? Let us do this on the next episode where we do this and we also maybe tackle the hyper stuff. For now, I want to say the things that I say at the end of each episode, which includes a big thank you and a huge shout out to the people at coffee.com who are supporting this show at coffee.com, who subscribe to this channel at coffee.com or just give up one of donations. Thank you so much for keeping this show alive. And also I will 
will read out a new comment. Uh, so this is from uh, uh, Sean McKenzie, and he wrote it on uh, one of the update videos, on the most recent Pico 8 update video. Hey Christian, thanks for all of the great tutorials. You have a real flair for instruction. I'm curious, Pico 8 has been out for quite a while, but it's still in the ver version 0.2.68. What, if anything, does this number tell you about the developer's plan for the final product? Uh, ask another way, the tool seems pretty stable and baked at this point, so what's keeping it from 1.0, and do you have any sense for why it's still so far from that numerically? Um, <laughs> okay, listen. <laughs> The numbers, they don't converge until 9.999 and then they will count over to 1. That's not how versioning works, okay? This is not a percentage number. The, the version number is not a percentage number. <laughs> Uh, that's not how it works in general. Um, the, uh, Zep, the developer of Pico 8, did post a roadmap for what he wants to have uh, for a version 1.0. And I think the major feature that is still missing is the, um, the leaderboards, the score score API. That's something that requires a lot of back-end work, like Zep has to set up a server that Pico8 communicates with and you have to create an account and stuff like that. I think it's gonna be an account. There's just a lot that, that needs to happen and it seems like uh, Pico8, uh, Picotron happened and, and Zep wasn't able to kind of like follow through on that score API and it seems like it was also more complicated than uh, Zep initially thought. Uh, what I'm expecting is that uh, we're gonna ha get a Picotron maybe in, like, in a good position where people can work with it. I think Picotron seems to be a big priority right now. And then we probably even gonna see Zep do like a stint on finalizing Pico 8 and adding the score API and doing the 1.0 release. But keep in mind, like it's just a number, right? Like it's, it's sure 0.268, it's not technically the release version, but as Sean already mentioned, this is this is a pretty finished product. It feels very finished. You can actually work with it even though it's technically a better. There's a lot of a lot of features, a lot of software that you use that are technically better. That doesn't mean that much. Maybe there's gonna be a huge marketing push when 1.0 comes out. Maybe the price will change. We don't know. We're gonna see. I'm certainly looking forward to the score API. That's something I've been you know, anticipating for a long time now. <laughs> it's been a while. Anyway, so today we did a lot of gameplay stuff. The game feels a lot more tight and, and uh, there's a lot of cool features, uh, but I think we need to now do another level of, of gameplay. We're gonna add all those features that, you know, nice pop-ups and then we're gonna dive into hyper stuff. That's coming up on the next episode. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.